Tyrese Halliburton utilizes this double drag screen from Austin Reeves and Bobby Portis, then skip passes it to the corner. With Cam Johnson's man rotating off him to pick up the rolling Portis as that pass occurs, this gets Cam leverage for a triple threat move and pull up on the baseline. Ingram receives the on-ball from Jackson, Johnson sets a hammer screen for Reeves, setting up the overhead cross-court swing and baseline attack. Jackson sets the flare for Ingram to set up a 5-out zoom action as the dribble pitch and handback is initiated to get a downhill attack for Brunson, who's able to muscle his way into the lane and to his spot. Steve Kerr's warrior bred offense fueled Team USA to a 20-0 second half run. The literal instant offense from Austin Reeves, transition obliteration, and Anthony Edwards standing out as the number one option contributed to the deadly recipe. Stay tuned to see how this team was built to make up for a lack of superstars and how they nicely executed on both sides of the ball to blow out Puerto Rico. Right quick, just 18.8% of my audience is subscribed, so if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. The best part about playing team sports is the camaraderie aspect as the bond between your fellow brothers or sisters is what makes going to battle as a collective unit so worthwhile. It's what I personally miss the most about playing competitively growing up, and it's what this USA group led by a four-time NBA championship winning man in charge knows they'll have to rely on. The idea is we are here to give you the very best possible experience uh, that, that we can. And with the knowledge that Yes, you're going to play in the NBA for years, but it's the experiences. Can you win? Like, can you bond with your teammates? Can you feel those moments in the locker room where it's like, hell yeah, nothing else matters. That's what this is. And there's a freedom to that. You know, you just, you just play, you just compete. We're going to give you everything we have as a staff. And, uh, and you guys are going to give us everything you have. It'll be an amazing experience. Unaccompanied with the luxury of anything close to a top 10 NBA player, Coach Kerr put together what's being labeled as a quote-unquote scheme team rather than your typical American dream team. Therefore, to win a gold medal, swiftly executed play sets, control of the basketball, plus fundamental rebounding and defense will all be a necessity. Kerr spoke on that, saying, quote, If we stay solid, really play without turning it over and without fouling, guard the three-point line and do a good job on the glass, we feel over 40 minutes we can wear people down, end quote. Jaron Jackson Jr. was forced to sit after getting into foul trouble, picking up his third just a few minutes into halftime, but an innovative small ball lineup involving Paolo Boncaro at the five would be shockingly effective. What's become evident is that Team USA is going to thrive off small ball. Over the past five days, whether it was the exhibition against Puerto Rico or the scrimmages, at no point did any of the team's three centers in Jaron Jackson Jr., Bobby Portis, and Walker Kessler share the court. And it seemed to work, as key in on the communication, swiftness, and screen navigation, a five-man unit of Brunson, Edwards, Bridges, Ingram, and Boncaro compete with on this possession to ultimately force an off-balance, extremely contested fadeaway triple from the right wing that clanks off back rim. Speaking on Paolo playing at the five spot, Kerr said, quote, He's going to play some five. One of the things we really found in 2021 at the Tokyo Olympics was having a five who can push the ball in transition and create plays is very difficult for FIBA teams to handle. So he can play some four, as he showed, but he'll play plenty of five as well. End quote. Considering the rookie of the year in Boncaro played merely 3% of his 2,430 minutes at center with Orlando throughout his first pro campaign in the association, it's a creative call from Kerr to play him at this position, to say the very least. In terms of how USA executed their offense, edited for us by Joe V-Ray, this quick hitting action which puts downhill pressure on the defense opened up the scoring for them. First, Jackson sets the pin down for Edwards at the elbow, and Brunson sends the entry to him. After receiving it, Edwards pitches a dribble handoff to Bridges on the left wing. Jackson shuffles over to set the on-ball screen, which gets him to switch onto a smaller defender, and the rest is history. 
Same action executed here with Paolo this time playing Jackson's role, setting the initial pin down. Reeves this time playing Edwards' role by receiving the entry and sending off the wing DHO. And Edwards this time playing the role of Bridges by creating off the dribble and receiving multiple on-ball screens, netting him an off the dribble three after Puerto Rico gets mixed up. This set again proves to be easy money down the stretch, as Jackson and Edwards are back in their original positions, but with Halliburton receiving the wing dribble handoff and swiftly drawing Puerto Rican gravity before hitting the roll man in Jackson, who has a wide open lane. Again, while this team doesn't have an NBA superstar, Timberwolves star Anthony Edwards is the closest thing they have to one. He's coming off a third season in the pros, where he averaged career highs in points, rebounds, assists, steals, field goal percentage, and three-point percentage. In the exhibition, Anthony dropped 11 third-quarter points, finishing with 15 to go along with four assists and four steals. Ant detailed his performance post-game, saying, quote, I just love to play basketball. Whatever I can do to get on the court, tie my shoes up, and go against another five, I'd wake up and do it every day if I can. We're building, we're getting closer and closer off the court, and I think that's going to make us a lot better on the court." End quote. Another player that'll have to act as a star for this team if they want to have any shot at winning gold is Los Angeles Laker fan favorite extraordinaire Austin AR-15 Reeves. After signing a four-year $56 million extension for the purple and gold, the sixth man for Team USA is ready to contribute. While Austin only scored 9 points in 19 minutes, after Steve Kerr subbed him in for the first time, he responded by immediately knocking down a 3-pointer, also providing some straight-up saucy moments like his typically electric scoring self. After gathering it in the corner in transition, watch this utterly shifty combo which features a tween dribble and smitty move on the baseline before he works his way into the paint for the reverse and credit his fellow fan favorite in Big Bobby Portis for the putback. Overall, in their opening exhibition, this was a balanced scoring effort, as it'll probably need to be from here on out. Seven players scored in double figures, including the entire starting five of Bridges, Ingram, Jackson Jr., Edwards, and Brunson, to go along with Halliburton and Johnson. More good news if you're an American is that there's a bunch of room for speculation that this group of above-average NBAers could play a lot better. Despite USA shooting a measly 6-for-27 from three-point range against Puerto Rico, the offense consistently created space for itself and therefore wide-open looks. The swiftly facilitated offensive prowess was especially apparent amidst the bench unit fueled by dicey, quick-twitch creators like Tyrese Halliburton and Austin Reeves. It's evident Halley and AR-15 love playing with one another as their assist-to-turnover ratio was beyond elite in the exhibition opener. Tyrese and Austin combined for a hefty 16 dimes and merely two giveaways. Give credit to Brooklyn Nets up-and-comer Cameron Johnson, who was the beneficiary of that creation, scoring what was tied for a team-high 15 points. The Big Three bench lineup of Reeves, Halliburton, and Johnson fueled a unit that was consistently pushing the tempo, which led to a ton of easy buckets in the open court. USA now travels for a back-to-back, -back, firstly against Luka Doncic and Slovenia, which should be a thriller on August 12th, followed by a matchup with Spain the next day. Let me know your biggest takeaway from Team USA's first exhibition down below in the comments section. Splash that sub box and leave a like if you haven't already. Deflo signing off.